So what I want to go through today is some of the basics for the planning side of the BPC product. I only have a few minutes here, so I'm going to be rushing through some of the information. But what I want to be able to show you guys is how one can interact with BPC for financial planning uh, as part of their process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step through something they call a business process flow within BPC. What this is is a customizable way to, to build a flow for your user. So the user would come in and they would follow one of these business process flows. Today we're going to go through our simple budget process flow, which basically is just like a step-by-step -step linking to all of the necessary bits and pieces one needs to do as far as their planning process. So what we should be seeing in front of us here is the business process flow to actually lead a user through the planning, get them through their planning process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of step through some of these different uh, steps we can lead the, the user through. So for example, we have our first step here where this is like the preparation. So if we take a look at where we are, we've gone through our first version of budgeting and we need to go re-budget now. So we've come back from management, they've asked us to make some changes. So we can see on our right here, we have information related to how we are doing with our versions. We've copied across our previous version, so we can see we have ver budget version 1 and version 2. So we can see they're the same right now, so we're going to be modifying them going forward. We had the opportunity to update some of the, the targets and the rates that we're going to be using for our planning. So say we have an, a new round of, of currency rates they put into place. We could have loaded those currency rates through. Um, and say we have some different changes to the, the methodology as far as the CapEx rates or say we have different allowances or have gotten information back on some of the statistics for say our salary planning and our uh, benefits information. So this first step would allow me to kind of go in and make some changes to that information. Right now I've completed those, that update uh, based on our time here and we're going to be moving forward now um, to be able to um, work through some of our information. I'm going to review this step and say that I've completed it. Moving forward then allowing me to uh, move on to the next step. So I'm going to accept the changes. I have the ability to look at some of the, the high level reports and see if I had any information there. But now moving on from this first step, it will open up now the step following it so that everything is, is step sensitive. So once you complete one step, you get moved on to the next one. It almost takes the hold of the hand of your user and leads them through what they need to do. So no more do you have to give out uh, massive amounts of instructions or sending various templates across email. This actually is going to lead us through step by step what they need to do. So for example here now, I'm going to open up more of my actual budgeting templates that I'm going to need to work with. So for example here, I have my units times rates. I've got expenses and capital expenditures. Let's jump right in and start working on, for example, our units times rates uh, planning. So what this is going to do now is that link that was in the BPC web is now taking me into BPC for Excel. So what this is is now it's like a hot link, a, a hyperlink opening up to uh, another part of the software. We're still within BPC. And as you can see, that we have some things here that look exactly like Excel should, right, because this is Excel, but we also have something that's BPC specific, and it is our action pane on the right. This action pane allows us to actually see where we are in the system, what we can do in the system, and helps us navigate through. So the first part here is our action pane. Uh, our action pane is our current view, and this is actually going to allow us to actually see where we are as far as within the organization. Now, this is our dimensionality within the system, and we can actually use this to navigate through the system. Based on what I'm planning today, I'm going to be working on the Italy budget. So it's actually sent me exactly where I need to be on the Italy budget. This is an example of our hierarchy structure for our entities within our organization. Um, this is all security-based as well. So if I had access to only Italy or say I was in charge of all of Europe, I could actually only see all of Europe based on security. So all of this information as well as the business process flows can be secured down to the user, to the actual intersection of information. Now another part here is our stuff related to our business process flow. So kind of giving us some overview, you can put some specific instructions here so that the user understands where and what they need to do within their business process flow. And then finally down here is our available tasks. So because I'm in BPC for Excel, because I'm working inside of an input schedule to actually load and put data through to the system, I have input schedule available information off to my right here. So the first thing I have here is kind of an overview of what my plan was. We took a copy of our, our version, so we're working on the next one. And I want to make some changes. I want to do some inputs that are different. So for example, I want to put some new uh, units in. So I want to actually go in and spread some data out. I know that I'm going to sell 500 units of this X300. 
um, sedan next year. I've heard that management came through and said we've got to make sure we push this guy, and so we're expecting to sell 500 of it in Italy. And I know that the X300 model is going to be like our X100, so I'm going to spread that information, those 500 units, the same way that the X100 is done. So you'll see that it has gone through and um, we'll take our information and spread it out based on the, the sales of it. So if I look across here, I have my 500 units of the X300. I can go now to my rates. And once again, because I know that it's just like my X100, I'm going to copy my rates from my X100 here. And I'm just going to paste them. I'm in Excel, so I can do all of the normal Excel type of things that I've always been able to do here in the system. And from there now, I have my units and times my rates in here. I can, the calculations can now be sent through. So I'm going to submit my data in. What this is going to do is it's going to go now calculate my revenue changes, right? So very easily, it's going to load through units for unit analysis later on. It's got these rates per unit that we've copied through and said that they're exactly the same as the X100. It's now going to do the math behind the scenes to calculate the revenue. It's also going to do the math to do the currency conversion. So for example, this is in euros because we're doing Italy's budget. It's going to convert that information um, to US dollars. So our consolidating company is in um, the US. So it'll take care of all of that information behind the scenes as it's loading through this data. So it's no longer you have to take all this disparate data, do the mathematics in Excel, and now roll it up someplace else and hope that everything is correct. So it's going to take care of all these steps for us because all of that information is set across. We know that the same rate is going to be used across the board for the euros. We know that the same calculation for units times rates will be used. Um, everything will be taken care of the same for everybody based on this information. So if we go back to our business process flow here, what I can actually see is now that I've moved on from this one, say I want to get to some other information here. So say, for example, I want to go move on to my employee information. Once it's going to do now, it's going to once again link me to a new template. And we'll see here that it's opened up another template, once again Excel. Once again, my action pane and my information that, that's relative to that information here. But now it's opened up a salary planning cube here. And what this is kind of just an example of what one can do within salary planning, but basically it's going to allow us to make some changes, add some information associated with it. So for example, let's give this guy, instead of a 4%, he overexceeded this year. He really went above and beyond. So I'm going to give him an 8% uh, for next year. Well, I get a pop-up here that says basically that if I have anything greater than 6%, I have to add an explanation. And so really what that is is it's not a stop, but it's something that people can put in place to kind of help guide their users through what's acceptable. So if they've set across the board 6% is the maximum, but if you need to exceed it, you need to put in um, a reason. So I can now go here and, and say that he went above and beyond um, as an explanation. And then that not only will get sent in with the 8% increase, but the comment will get sent in as well. So we can actually send in alphanumeric information associated with this same increase here. <clears throat> as well, I also have the capability here to insert a new hire. So for example, if I wanted to come in here and hire somebody new, I can actually come through, pick very easily a new hire. I can say what they're going to be doing. So I have all of these out of the, the um, setup about all of the different uh, information I have within my system. And now I can go in and put information into them. I can say they're going to start on 6-1. I can say that their salary is going to be 120000 And from this information, just sending this information through, it will go now and calculate all of the information related to this data. 